Hello and welcome to a very short tutorial of how to start up the real air turbine duke engines. So each step is part of a checklist and should be performed precisely to make sure everything is working proper properly and as it should. So uh, here goes. First of all, we have to set our parking brakes. We have to check all our circuit breakers are in. Of course, they do not work here, but are modeled exactly as in real life. The alternate static source, which is this switch, should be set to normal. Cabin temperature mode should be off, which is a switch right here, which controls uh, uh, like the air conditioning of the aircraft. Landing gear handle should be down. The condition levers, which are right here, should be 0%, should be idle. Propeller levers should be high RPM, fully forward throttle or power levers should be idle that's good the left sub panel switches are all off so let's start our aircraft first of all battery switch to on second thing to do we have to test our annunciator panels which show several indicator lights we have two annunciator panels so first one test click and hold all the lights are working and fine okay good right annunciator panel test click and hold all lights are working it looks fine so now we should uh, put our both uh, fuel selectors for the right engine to on and the left engine to on okay so uh, now uh, we have set the fuel selectors to on and we have to check the right engine and the left engine fuel pressure annunciator red lights should be on because we do not have any fuel pressure which is indicated by this instrument right here as you can see the right and left fuel pressure is a zero that's perfectly normal now we have to start our uh, electric pump one for the right engine and the left engine so we click both pumps check the sound check the rise in the fuel pressure in both engines check the engine fuel pressure annunciator lights they have turned off because we have uh, fuel pressure reading on the instruments in the green range so they should go off after that finally you have to check the voltmeter reading which is, as you can see here is 24 volts now we can go ahead starting with our right engine by convention we always start our right engine so first of all we have to put the right ignition engine switch to on okay and we have to check the uh, right ignition annunciator light and check illuminated so it is illuminated so that's good now we put the right generator or starter switch to starter on and we check the starter uh, annunciator light and it's illuminated and wait for the ng for t to reach 12 percent or higher and that's very good here this is very important parking brakes should be on and right click the right condition lever and put it to low idle about 30 percent no more or else the engine will start spooling up and the aircraft will start going crazy now we have to watch for the instruments uh, now we should watch for the uh, stable NG rising and the ITT which is the interstate turbine temperature and the NG should not go beyond the red line none of the engine indicators should ever go beyond the red line if they do you have to cancel engine start immediately by pulling the condition levers to uh, idle after that we have to monitor the NG should be about 50 to 51 percent that is very good we have to uh, check the right engine oil pressure I'm gonna just move this here for a second and as you can see that the right engine oil pressure is in the green and the right engine oil temperature is in the green so that is very good now we're gonna put the right engine ignition switch to auto okay so the and the right uh, generator to on and check that we have a right generator load as you can see here and it should be uh, less than 0.5 uh, 0.5 should it be the maximum now we're gonna turn turn it off until we uh, put it on off until we do the same steps for the left engine so left uh, same steps left engine ignition switch on that's good check the left engine annunciator light left ignition it's illuminated that's good let's go back to our starter switch starter on check the starter lights that's good 
watch for the NG 12% or higher that's good right click stay in position and it will start working fine that's good we have to monitor the ITT and the NG should not cross the red line wait until it stabilizes check the left engine oil pressure and temperature both are in the green so that it's very good and watch for it for to stabilize so the NG is 50 to 51 percent so that is very good now we should put the in uh, left engine ignition switch to auto and we should turn on the left generator to provide us AC current and the right generator too and watch out for the loads and sh they should not exceed 0.5 alright so as you can see here uh, most of the engine lights, the red lights have gone off so for the last steps which are the after start uh, checklist steps so we should start our main inverter standby in the inverter is just a backup so we put uh, on the main inverter start the avionics master switch to on now we have electrical power to all the avionics of the aircraft set the lights as required so I'm just gonna hide the yoke here if you click on the yoke it goes away T gonna set the beacon and recognition lights and taxi lights because we're gonna taxi in a bit start our radios as you can see here these are the on and off switches switch on our radios our transponder our GPS and our ADF as required so now we should uh, turn on the cabin temperature mode selector so we can select if it's a hot day we we can cool the aircraft and if it's uh, a cold day we can heat the aircraft so that's good now we, sh we should check the annunciator panels we should make sure that both annunciator panels have no red warning lights and we should test them and and reset them and make sure that no lights are on do the same thing for the left annunciator panel and they're okay once the uh, engine is starting there is an engine driven fuel pump which uh, works continuously as long the, as the engine is working the electric fuel pump is just used uh, when the engine is running so if we turn them, them off it's okay we still have fuel pressure because the pump is now engine driven but when you take off uh, it's, uh, it's better to leave it on so that no problems can occur now we can uh, have to check all our instruments that the uh, attitude indicator uh, are working fine we have to check our gyro pressure which uh, which operates our gyroscopic instruments so as you can see the gyro pressure is working fine and uh, this uh, the gyroscopic instruments are the attitude indicator the headache indicator and the turn or coordinator and all of them are working fine all the instruments are stabilized here is the DME switch and uh, all the annunciator panels are working fine instruments are working fine engine is stabilized and that is all for the uh, engine start up procedure it's truly really an amazing aircraft so uh, if you have any uh, questions uh, any requests any criticisms if you uh, want me to talk faster slower uh, different accent if you want me to uh, become more detailed or simpler in my explanations if you want long, longer or shorter videos, I'll be glad to abide by your requests. So, uh, if you want a more detailed video about this aircraft, because there is a lot we did not discuss, such as the oil doors, all of these switches here, cabin pressurization, all how to use these instruments, there is a lot to this aircraft. Please uh, comment and tell me that uh, you would like to see another video. Please feel free to uh, rate, comment and subscribe for more videos and uh, thank you very much for watching.